Well, let's go ahead and get started. I appreciate everyone's patience again this morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for attending today's Lunch and Learn training session from STCR. My name is Ben Decker. I'm the sales engineer here at STCR, and I'm joined by Jen Fairley-Custer, one of our support account managers who will be leading today's session on SMS labels. At STCR, we've been supporting the technology needs of grocers for over 56 years and believe that ongoing training is essential to meet the ROI targets you have for a new POS system. This is why we have put together this monthly webinar series to help address and provide ongoing training on some key areas within, within the SMS solution. These will happen the last Thursday of every month and cover the topics within SMS that are common for our support center to receive questions on from grocers all over the country. Today, we'll be going over the native signs and labels program within SMS, and Jen will take you through label creation and template editing. We welcome and are happy to take any questions via the QA function along the way, and we'll answer them at the end of Jen's presentation. At STCR, we are dedicated to providing quality training and support to all of our customers and hope this serves as a great resource for you and your staff as a reference point moving forward, as we want to empower you to take full advantage of SMS and all that it has to offer to your business. Today's session is being recorded, and all these webinars will be available for viewing after the fact. In a moment, there will be a brief QA prompt on your screen, and I appreciate your, your cooperation and participation today. With that, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Jen. Jen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ben, for that introduction. As he stated, I will be going into the native labels in SMS today. I'm going to focus on printing labels at first, some best practices for printing labels, and showing you some of the options available for pulling items in to be able to print. And then I'm going to touch on creating and editing labels using the built-in label editor inside the system. So to start, the SMS has two different ways to print labels. The first way is what is referred to as print label. That is mostly utilized on the PDA, and it's utilized to print and able, print out a label instantly. So if you're out on the shelf, you notice that one is missing, a tag is missing, you can scan the item and print out a label and it prints out right then and there, usually with a belt printer, but it can print in the back if that's the preference. The other option is the instant label. What the instant label does is create label batches in the back office to be able to print out labels all at once. So if you have sheets of labels that have like six across or six down, three across, it allows you to batch up those items so that you're filling out those sheets all at once. Since I brought that up, I will show you on the PDA how that works. And then we'll switch over to the back office because a lot of label printing is utilized from the PDA option. Up on the screen right here is a PDA screen. To go into labels, you're gonna go into the tasks and then you have those two selections I just went over. You have instant label and print label. Print label is designed to be printed instantly. I know that's a little confusing with the verbiage. The best way I can think of it is that print label is it prints right now. Instant label creates a batch instantly. So the user would go into the PDA, go into print label, scan in their item at the top. They would be able to select their template and then they print. And this will print immediately. There really isn't an option to print label in the back office version. There is ways to print one label off at a time if necessary. But for the most part, this is utilized on the PDA as it's meant to be, I see a label missing, I need to print a label right away, I notice that the price is wrong. So it gives you that option to be able to very quickly fix that. The other option is, as I said, the instant label, which creates the label batch in the back. It is available on the handheld, reason being that you may want to come in, you may want to have the user go out and they want to create a sheet of labels to go back and update all the shelf labels in a specific aisle. So then go through, same idea as the print label and they scan in their item, they pick their label template, and then they can also pick what they would like to use as the reference for the price. Then they can keep scanning items and it will continue to build a label batch in the back. In the back office portion, I have our a basic item maintenance screen open. 
you can also create label batches from here as well. They can also add to the same batch that the, is being utilized on the handheld. There's various ways that you can do that. One very common way is that they come up under analysis. There's a drop down for utilities. There is an instant label button right here available to help you add items into a label batch. So as you're going through your item maintenance, you would pull up your items. Whatever items that you would like to add to the label batch, you would just then select instant label. And it brings up this menu option right here. This is an item label. Majority of labels, you always have to pick the template. There's always gonna be more than one label that you can print. So you're gonna have different sheets, you'll have different sizes, you may have different uh, tags that you use for different events, like you have sale tags that you use that are different color that are slightly different size. So there's usually gonna be several options. So there's always going to be that step where you need to make sure you specify what label you would like to print. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'll use my 16 up 325. And then I wanna add this item to that batch and I do launch. And then I can go to the next item and do launch, however it may be. This is very useful if you're just creating one batch to put a, several random items in for whatever reason. Like I said, on the handheld, you may just be doing an entire aisle. There's a certain section that the shelf labels are just getting a little grungy. You just want to create, or you may be adding new items into the system. If you're in the back and you're adding a bunch of new items in the system, you want to create labels as you go. So there's some reasons you may be doing this. The other way that you can also create an item label batch from the item maintenance screen is you can do everything in the browser. So up under analysis, we just went into utilities. When we went into utilities, we selected our instant label, which actually opens up the label item, but there is the label browser. And this opens up very similar looking screen. Same idea with this, you're going to be selecting your label format as always. But with this, with the item browser, this is gonna pull in all the items in the browser. So it's not just gonna be one item at a time, you are going to be able to pull up items, all the items that you have currently up. This is very helpful if you're trying to do a big group of items, you wanted to retag an entire group of items. Every option that's over here, so you have sub department, if you wanted to do all the ones in a category, vendor ID, vendor code, like code, alternate code, whatever you're looking to do, you can go ahead and pull them into the browser and then create a label batch. So I'm just gonna do sub department and I'm gonna just do everything in my bakery sub department. I'm gonna pull them into my browser. So I'm gonna hit my play, pulls in all my items in my bakery sub department, which is nine items. So I can hit my count up there to get nine items. I'm gonna pick my label format. If I'm just doing this for because I want to just retag the sub department, the sub department, maybe I'm doing a sale, PPR, you can pick your price event. You can also use price of you can also use active or next price. And then you just do launch to add that into or add it into or create a new label batch, depending on if you have a new label format. I'm just going to go ahead, hit launch. It always prompts you on the item browser. You notice I get this prompt with the item browser, but not the item labels. It's because it's making sure you wanna add all the items in the browser. I only have nine items in the sub department. That's not a lot, but the system is always gonna prompt because you could have your entire item file up in there. So it could be like 200,000 items, whatever they may be. So it's always just gonna give you that one. Are you sure you meant to do this? And you go ahead and hit okay. Yes, I did. Before I switch over to the labels and show you where that print label goes, I also wanted to bring up that there is an additional table that can be utilized. All right here, you notice that there's use template from shelf. There is a shelf table that can be added to your items. What this does is that you can come down here and you can specify for on each item. So you can come down and specify on each item a shelf ID. You can also specify a label template. If there is a specific label template you always want to use with items, you can come into those items and you can pick that label template and save it here. So that way, that way, if I'm coming to print labels, 
I can select to use the template from shelf. And it will always print this label template. This is a common practice I've seen with produce. There's usually small tags that they always want to use for produce. They don't want to accidentally use a bigger tag or anything like that. So that way it will always pull from in here. If you wanted to do a special tag, you can certainly do that. You can always not check use template from shelf and go ahead and print that, but it is nice to have that option that you can just make sure that when you print this item, if they select the shelf, uh, use template from shelf, it will print that label template. This is gonna come up a little bit too when we go into the label, some other ways to pull it in. So I just wanna make sure I went over that. If you are wanting to use this, this is a drop down under your item maintenance. And you just do shelf and that will open up that window so you can start specifying label templates on each individual item. So that's the item maintenance portion of being able to create a label batch. So now we can go into our labels and we can look at some other ways you can create label batches. So if you click on the labels underneath extract label, there's some different ways that you can come in and pull in items to create label batches. We'll go through first the item label. You can create label batches based on price events. This is if a price was a price change is scheduled up to a specific date, you can create a label batch. So you can come in, pick your date that the price prices are scheduled to change on. Select if you wanted to have all the items that are not have not for sale or do not have not for sale or just all items. And you can specify where you want your next price source to come from. So if these prices are going to change and be a TPR or change to be a sale price, you can specify that. You can also do on active price. So active price being the active price right here, that is the active price of the item. What date was that updated? So you can do a label on active price for a particular day. So you can go create a label batch for all the items that the price was changed on a particular date. This is useful if you have a sale or TPR that kicked off maybe a few days ago, the batch was already executed and you need to go back and you need to go back and create labels for them. The, on the flip side of that is label on next price. So if you're doing item price changes on the next price, you can come in and you can specify that I want, it, this price is going to take effect on this specific date. You can also create them on the next price. With all of these that I'm going through, it's always gonna be, you have to pick your template and then based on the criteria from what we had before, you can then come in and do what date. So this is activated on date or active on date. Pick your price source, and then if you want it not for sale, down here, you also always have the selection for if you have a label format in the location, or if you wanted to have a quantity set in that same location. And if you want to print more than one for each one. Some other ones that you can also do, label on all items to be deployed. If you are familiar with SMS, you have to make the changes in the back office when you're doing any change to description, to the point of sale, to the price, you make the change in the back office and to push it down to the lane, you'll need to run the deploy changes. It could be tedious if you're going through and making a lot of changes on items. Maybe you're changing a bunch of descriptions, the brand's changing, they, whatever it may be. It can be a little tedious to go through and as you're making the change, remember to go and hit Oh, I have to add this to label batch. Have to add this to label batch as you go. So that way you can print out with all the new nice descriptions at the end. Instead, you can hold off on running the deploy change and you can run a label batch and create a label batch on any item waiting to be deployed down to the lanes. However, it must be run. You must print the labels before the deploy change runs. So if you hit deploy change, it's too late. You can't get that back. You can go print the label still, of course. You have to go manually find the label and print it. But this option would not be available. So you would just come in, always pick your template, pick the date and time of the deploy. So it still hasn't run yet, your price source, 
If you wanted to sort it by subdepartment, anything like that, your label formats down here. You can also, instead of going through and doing those options, well, not, not instead of, I apologize, you can come down here and with that location table, you can only print labels with the location. The same thing with the deploy changes, but instead of deploy changes on all items, it'll just do deploy change, the ones that are waiting to be deployed with ones that have a specific location. There's some grouping that you can also pull them in with. You can do any item that has any, I'm sorry, all items in a subdepartment, all items in category, all items in family code, report code or vendor and specify those. Similar to the idea with the item browser up here where I pulled up subdepartment eight and I did the item browser, you can come down here and just do label by subdepartment and pick that subdepartment or any of the other ones that I went through. Category, family code, report code, vendor code. You come in, you pick your vendor code and it will pull in all the items that have that vendor assigned to them. With that location table right there, you, we also have that as an option too, label by location. It'll pull in by aisle or all the items that have a location specified with a label format. A big one that I get, we get asked a lot is by batch. You can create labels on a future batch. There is a little, um, we'll say some certain criteria that must be met. It's only on in-store price batch, future price batch, sale batch, and TPR batch. What does that mean? If you're, if you're familiar, the price table has a regular price field, TPR field, sale field, and in-store field. So the batches line up with those. So you can have an in-store price batch, the prices go to this field, sale batch, they go to this field, TPR, they go here, or if you're changing the regular price, that's the future price batch, it goes to your regular price. The batches need to be an in in-store, so they need to have not been executed yet. So as long as they're not executed and they meet one of these criteria, so it's not a cost batch, you can come and create a label batch based off this. So I do have a sales batch, so I'm just gonna go in and show you how that works. So I'm gonna go and label on sale batch. I'm gonna pick my label format. I don't remember my batch number. You could remember your batch number, but if you don't, you can actually come in here and double click and it's gonna pull up any batches that meet that criteria. So it needs to be an in-store batch or, and I'm sorry, and it needs to be a sales batch. So I go ahead, click okay. I want it to be, I'm gonna make my sales. Actually, since it's a sale, we'll use sale and I'm gonna launch and it's gonna create an item label batch. So now we have all these various ways that we can create the batches for the, la the label batches. Now we need to print them. So I can come down underneath execute label and I can print the label. Right here is where they're all created. It's gonna be listed in the label format type and then by the operator. If you batch the label, it's not gonna have an operator number. So I just batched that label for the sales, it's not gonna have an operator number. From here, you can view all the items in. You can come and view. This is all the items in the batch. You can edit the labels in the batch. So if you need to change a price, change a descriptor, delete, you can do that from here. You can delete the batch. You made it by accident. You pull in all, all the items in your item file into the batch. And then of course you can print. When you're printing, it pulls up this screen. First, you need to select your printer name. So whatever printer has your labels in it, you're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to print to my PDF for mine. I wanna use my base settings for labels since I'm printing labels. You can then pick how you would like the labels to be ordered by. So they can be ordered by two methods. You can come in and specify, I want it to be ordered by category. And then within the category, I want it to be ordered by UPC number. So it'll print out each category and then within each category it's by UPC number. You can do shelf location, vendor ID, brand, description, price start date, whatever works best for you. If you just wanna go by UPC number, that's a default right there. If you are ordering it by something specific, so we'll just say category, you wanna have a break on change. 
that means that if you're printing by category, it prints one category, it'll print one blank label, and then it will print the next category. So there's a break. So you know that there's a new category, you can go ahead and click that box. The other thing down here is skip label. When you get a label sheet, they usually have anywhere from four labels to 24 labels. Like I said before, with like three across and eight down, maybe you have two by two, whatever it may be. Sometimes you don't use that entire sheet. So I have like a 24 that I have labels on my sheet. I only use 10 of them, but I still wanna use that sheet because there's still a good 14 labels on there. You can tell the system to skip the first so many labels. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, you can skip 10, you can skip one, whatever it may be. I'm just, and uh, you can, that way you can keep using that piece of paper and then launch. Because I printed to a PDF, it's prompting me to save it. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this sale two. And then it's gonna prompt me, printing job finished, would you like to delete these labels? If you hit cancel, the label batch will stay in here. It will not be deleted. If you hit okay, the label batch will be deleted. If you do hit okay or, ac or accidentally delete a batch, it's not gone forever. There is an option right down here to restore print job. So you can always restore print job based on the date range. They're never gone for good. Just so you can see what our labels look like that we just printed. So right there, I have a sale. There's all my sale prices. Because I use the sale template, I have the regular price, I have the use saved. It's all in here. So that way I can then go out and start hanging these on the shelf. This is one way that you can look at a label. There's obviously, this is a sale one. There is regular that I printed earlier. So there is labels where you have it like this. This is where I did the skip label. So you can see that there's various, I skipped one label right here. And then the rest of them have skipped over and just continued on down. This would be more like a regular shelf label. The last part I wanted to touch on is editing the label. So we don't expect you to very often be able to go in and edit labels, but if you are comfortable with a little bit of HTML editing, there is the ability that you can come in and edit labels. To start with, I always say to back up the labels first, because once you make a change to a label, you, you may need to change back to what it was before. Easiest way to back up labels before you edit a label is if you go into your Storeman Office directory, all your label templates are kept in the LBZ folder. Just make a copy of this folder. This contains all your label templates, so that way if you make a change to any of your labels, you can easily go back to the original label. What I normally do is I just come in here, do a quick copy, either paste it right here so it just does a LBZ copy, or I paste it in a folder or on the desktop, whatever it may be. And that way, if I make a change and it completely changes the whole label and I can't get it to revert back, I have a backup to go back to. Now that I've backed it up, I can right underneath restore print job is your edit label. This is going to be, like I said, a very basic overview, just to give you an idea of how you can come in here and make the changes. Up under file, you're going to go into open and you're going to pick what label you would like to edit. I'm just going to go into our regular 16 up, always, always a safe one. Since I have a label right here of the same exact one, that way we can kind of run a compare. This looks a little messy compared to what you get when you print out a label. There is some overlap. Right here with the pricing, we always have to do a little overlap if they have items that are dollar and change, or if it's just change only, we overlap that on there. So if it's just change, it shows the big numbers and the small cent sign, and underneath that I have the dollars. So Using this example, this was the label that we printed. So you can see I had 88 cents and then 279. So they are overlapping. So the system knows whichever one is being utilized, it'll pull that to the forefront. Inside this main template is where we have a lot of very specific requirements that need to be met for the labels. 
you have a height requirement. This is how high the label is. So that is very exact. You can see it's 1.19. I usually say get, get your rulers out or it should say on the box, but get your rulers out. You want this to be very exact. The same thing with the width. It's 3.24 inches across. Anytime that you are coming in and either creating or making any minor changes to a label, if you're making changes to an existing template, these should always stay steady because the, the size doesn't change from paper to paper. It's always exactly the same. But if you are creating a new one, you're gonna notice that this is very exacting because if you get this a little off, it will be right on the first one. And then as you go through and print more labels, it'll get a little bit more off, a little bit more off, a little bit more off. So this is very exacting. The same thing with the margins on the top and the bottom. So this margin up here, so if you're looking at an eight by eight and a half by 11 paper, there's a little bit of margin before it starts to label, you're gonna, they're gonna want an exact offset. As exact as you can get to the hundreds. Same thing with the side, as exact as you can get, that's your horizontal print margin. If there's any room in between the labels, that's also very specific. So you have a little bit of room in between each label, you're gonna have 0 0.08. Same thing with up and down. You would have the very little bit, 0 0.08 up and down. This is one of the tedious parts of setting up a label. This is very exacting. I always suggest making the changes and printing to a PDF. Try to get it as close as you can to a, on the computer before you start using your label stock. That way you can try to get it as much as you can exact before you start utilizing that. There's also right here your horizontal quantity, how many across two across and then eight down. That's that you just need to count. The rest of this is all about the, what data you want to show inside the label. If there is fields that you want to show or fields that you want to delete, deleting especially on a label is quite easy. You can come and select what box you don't want to show anymore and just hit delete. If you wanted to undo that, there's always the undo up here. The way the SMS works is on these, you point to a database field. We don't expect you to know the field numbers. So there is a box right here that will pull up all of the field numbers with the description. So that way, if you're trying to add or change a box, you can hit that button and change it to whatever it is that you're looking for. This is my unit description. Maybe I wanna show my vendor ID number instead, that's F27. Don't expect you to know that field number. We want you to, that this way you can go and find the description. Other things that you can change here besides just the data, you can change the font name, you can change the font size, you can change the height that the box is allowed to fit in. So that is the box that we're looking at right here. That is the maximum height that you can have in there. You can also change your rotation if you want it to stretch out or you just want it to print as is. All of these are options that are available that you can come in and look at. You can come in and try to change. That's why I said, you kind of always suggest you always back up the label template. That way you always have something to fall back to. The only other thing I would like to bring up is at the top, these are how you can add fields to the label. If you're looking to obviously I just show you how to delete, but if you're looking to add them to the table, you can change you can add, I'm sorry, a uh, database, same idea. You can, it'll just pop up right here. You can move it around. Then you point to the database field you want and set all that criteria. You can just say text. So if you always want the same text to show on a label, you can do that. Barcodes, if you want to, this does have a barcode on here, but if you wanted to add a barcode, you can add a barcode or you can add an image. I always say to make sure with the images, you make sure that they're pretty, pretty um, basic just because the more detailed on a very small label, it's not gonna print very clearly. So the more basic it is, the easier it will be printing. If you're creating a new label, same thing that we're just going through, but instead of going into open, you're just gonna create new. And then you're gonna go through the same steps that we just went through, setting those margins, setting the size of the label, setting the offsets, and then starting to add all these fields in. As I said, this was meant to be a high level overview of label editing. So if you have something you're interested in, this is certainly something we would have an in-depth 
conversation or training session with you about, and you can go in and go into really details and show you a lot more. But for now, I'm going to turn it back over to Ben to see if there's any questions. Awesome. <clears throat> Jen, great job. I think you covered a lot of important uh, details there within the label editors within SMS. I uh, do have a few questions that came through. Uh, the first one is, uh, how do you change the size of the price numbers within that label editor? All right, let me go back in there. I should have kept it open. <laughs> um, so, yep, so right here, so I'll just pick my, my, uh, my price. So you can see that with the layers of the price, my font size is right here. So 35, so I can go ahead and bump this up to 40 or whatever font size I wanna bump that up to. If you're looking to bump it up though, you're gonna to wanna to probably make the box a little bit bigger. You can either do that by clicking and dragging or you can do edit the height and then you can go back and see how it edited up to 38. So you need to make sure the box can hold the font size and then you can bump that font size up to whatever you need to bump it up to. Great, thanks Jen. Uh, another question we had here is that our wholesaler sends us all of our sale prices. Can those sale items be automatically put into a label batch for us to print out later? So depending on how the wholesaler is sending them down, um, if you are batching the changes from the wholesaler, which is a setting, you can batch them. So that way they're sitting in the in-store batch. You can come in and print the label from the batch right here. If you're not batching the changes, that's where when we were going through the item labels with the label on active price. So you can come through and you can pick the date that those prices took effect. So whatever date the wholesaler came through with the price changes, you can come and set that date and you can create a label batch based off of that. And if it's a regular price, sale price, TPR, in-store price, so that way you can just do that. So it depends on how your system is set up. It's unfortunately you cannot set it to print just automatically, so it creates when it automatically when the changes come down. But you can come in and utilize either of these methods to create labels based off of those. Awesome, great. Hopefully that answers that question. Uh, if there are any more questions, continue to type them into the QA function there. Another one that came through, Jen, is when editing a label, can you use your base unit of measure to cm and not pounds? So can you change that unit of measure uh, within those templates? Yes, yes, you can. So if you come into, just go in. Um, if you wanted to change like the weight units right here, you can change that. If you're wanting to change it, I'm, I'm, you said pounds to centimeters, so I'm not, but you can change the base weight units down here, but you can also change the inches to centimeters. Sorry, I'm not sure which one you're going with pounds to centimeters, so, but you can change both of those. Little ruler right there, imperial to metric. And then down here is really the kilograms to Wonderful. pounds. Okay, I ho hopefully that answers uh, your question. If you need more clarification on that, please do not hesitate to you know, type in. Uh, another one that did come in here is if I don't use SMS today, and I decide to install SMS, can I continue to use my current label software or do I have to use uh, the integrated one with SMS? You can continue to use your own software. Um, we have the ability to talk to a lot of the software, such as Bartender, we can send that over. So whatever, we could talk to you, discuss what you're currently using, and you can definitely still utilize that system. Uh, it just wanna be the built-in system that I just went over. Okay, so then a follow-up question from that, um... We use Bartender uh, version seven right now, have an extensive label database. How easy would it be for us to import templates to the new database? With Bartender um, specifically, we can take the label templates, bring them over to SMS. There's a little bit of modification we have to go in and do, but it's very simple. So it would not be difficult. Wonderful. And there was another question, which I can I can take. Uh, correct, this session is being recorded, and we'll be sending out the link to re review these videos uh, anytime in the future uh, for future reference as well. Thank you for your question. Okay. 
Um, I did also launch a poll as well. I see a lot of you are already answering it, um, just if you're currently using SMS today. So thank you for participating in that poll. Yes, we appreciate that. Okay, so, so we had another question here come through, Jen. Um, one of our attendees said that they had some issues with uh, 32 up labels in one column uh, moves to the right. Uh, where can that be edited so it only affects the column on the far right? So you have the 32 up, so it's like eight by four, usually with the 32 up, so it's like eight down and four across. It's, if it's going like off the side of the very last column, yes. mm -hmm. um, I, would like, I would say that we could take a look at that. The reason why it's more than likely moving off a little bit is there's a very small measurement issue inside the, inside the label. What I would suggest is opening up a ticket either with the help desk or you can email me directly and I can pull that template up and we can go over that. Uh, it's usually, generally speaking, anytime that you have that, it's a very small margin issue that's just pushing it off a little bit to the side. Uh, it's usually the horizontal offset or the horizontal print margin or the height. So everything is built off of the left, so you start at the left-hand side, so the margin comes over. And then it's the size of the label, the offset, the size of the label, the offset, the size of the label, the offset. So there's no way to do it on the right hand side, but it's usually something very small that's just off. And I, I like I said, it's this is where that little tedious comes in where it's up to the hundreds. So it's probably just something that's slightly off that's pushing it a little bit over with each label so that on the last column, that's where you're really seeing it. But uh, you're welcome to reach out uh, directly to me or open up a help desk ticket if you uh, have SMS currently and we can get in there and take a look at that template and get that resolved for you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jen. Uh, another question came through is that they saw that shelf uh, table in the item maintenance window earlier. Uh, They're wondering if you could reshow how to access that table. Of course, let me go back. So when you are, when you pull up your item maintenance screen, usually you, like everybody has the price and the cost come up. Up underneath the drop down with items, the fifth selection down is shelf. So you go ahead and click on that. It'll open up and just move it to wherever works for you to move it to. And then awesome. I had more details. So if you do this little line right here, this little box and this little line, it will show more information. If you're wanting to look at more of that, I had the position, I had that open earlier. Get very huh? detailed with this. <laughs> awesome work. Thank you, Jen. Um, so at the moment, that is all the questions. I'll still give everyone you know, another minute or two to ask any final questions they might have. <clears throat> Uh, thank you to all of our attendees you know, for the questions and for attending today's monthly lunch and learn. For any of our non-STCR customers on the call today, if you have more questions about SMS or STCR, please do not hesitate to send an email to myself. Uh, you can see my email on the screen here, uh, bend at stcr.com, so we can coordinate the appropriate follow-up. Uh, for all of our current customers, we appreciate and value your business and look forward to helping each and every one of you with your retail technology needs. Please do not hesitate to email us or call our 24-7 help desk so we can assist you properly. STCR will soon also be offering electronic shelf labels to our customers. Uh, we can open up another poll here, Jen, in the chat briefly. Uh, if, those if there are folks here that would be interested in learning more about our ESLs. Uh, ESLs have been in the industry for over 25 years now, and we see this as a useful tool to help combat some of the rising uh, industry costs, especially in the labor field. Uh, within the grocery. As mentioned at the beginning, this webinar will be available today uh, after the session for you and other members of your team to be used as a future refresher on the topics covered today. Our next session will be on March 30th. We'll be going over scale management and maintenance. Uh, we hope to see you all there. Thank you again and have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you all so much.